sorry. My face is tired from dealing with everything. Hello, this is Young Deuces doing the list for the top 10 video game series that went downhill. For this list, we'll be looking at notable game franchises that took a dip in quality and have yet to truly return to form. However, we won't be including games that killed their franchises outright. Which of these makes you the saddest? Know of any others? Let us know in the comments down below. Number 10, Halo series. Wake up, Chief. I need you. The Xbox and Halo began a beautiful, highly beneficial relationship between Microsoft and developer Bungie. That lasted through 2010's Halo Reach, after which Bungie moved on to other projects. But before that release, a new studio was founded to take over the reins, 343 Industries. 2012's Halo 4 was a strong entry, even if it didn't quite measure up to the others. But things took a dip soon after. The Master Chief Collection had an incredibly troubled launch, marred by bugs and matchmaking issues. 2015's Halo 5 Guardians is seen by fans as the low point of the mainline series, especially due to its lackluster campaign. The long-awaited Infinite earned back some goodwill, but the franchise's peak seems to have long passed. Number 9, Mass Effect series. Despite BioWare's established reputation as an RPG developer, 2007's Mass Effect still blew everyone away. The emphasis on player choice was monumental and intrinsic throughout the original trilogy. Rather, we should say it was intrinsic throughout most of it. Mass Effect 3's simplistic ending angered a lot of passionate players. Some even organized the retake Mass Effect campaign and drew the attention of government bodies over product misrepresentation. 2017's Andromeda, which was handled by a new team during a fraught development period, didn't do anything to smooth things over. The biggest impression it made on the public's radar consisted of bugs and laughable facial animations. BioWare is currently working on a new game, which we hope returns the series to glory. Number 8, Star Fox series. Though it doesn't look like much today, 1993's Star Fox was an important step for 3D gaming. The next entry, Star Fox 64, was even more impressive with smooth as silk gameplay and the introduction of rumble in home consoles. Sadly, the franchise left its innovative days behind long ago. 2002's Adventures was seen by most as a watered down Zelda clone. Assault and Command put Fox back in the cockpit, yet still didn't leave much of a mark. A decade without a new game was followed by 2016 Star Fox Zero, whose controls were too awkward to thoroughly enjoy. It was nice to see the canceled Star Fox 2 get released in 2017, but it certainly wasn't the new installment fans wanted. Number 7, Guitar Hero Series. For a few years, we all subscribed to the fad of playing real rock songs with fake instruments, and it was glorious. But there's a good reason it only lasted a short period. Harmonix developed the first two Guitar Hero entries for the PS2. When Activision acquired publisher Red Octane, as well as the series, it oversaturated the rhythm market with a mountain of releases. In 2009 alone, we got entries specific to Van Halen and Metallica, spin-offs Band Hero and DJ Hero as well as the mainline Guitar Hero 5. It didn't help that Harmonix was also milking the Rock Band series around the same time. By the time 2015's Guitar Hero Live was released, not many players cared, resulting in poor sales and reception. Number 6, Battlefield series. We have lost objective apples. <laughs> Battlefield may still be one of the biggest FPS franchises all around, but we can't deny an obvious decline in quality over the past few entries. Beginning with the original, 
Battlefield 1942, the series set itself apart from other warfare FPSs through its large scale maps and greater focus on teamwork. Since then, it's cultivated a robust online community, though it seems that community grows weary with every new release. Both Battlefield 4 and Hardline still had fun multiplayer, though their campaigns left a lot to be desired. Following the bright spots of Battlefield 1, 2018's Battlefield 5 was bland and lacked originality. However, 2042 was the last straw for many, as it came with a myriad of bugs and not nearly enough worthwhile features. Number 5, Prince of Persia series. Each time I struck them down, they rose to fight again. I soon realized that only by taking them to my own dagger with the sands that possess what began as an obscure platform series found new life when Ubisoft revitalized Prince of Persia with 2003's The Sand of Time. Strangely, after a couple of well-received sequels, Ubisoft rebooted with the self-titled 2008 release. The cel-shaded style and true ending locked behind DLC rubbed some the wrong way, and Ubisoft would go back to the former continuity with 2010's The Forgotten Sands. Neither this entry nor the 2008 reboot measured up to its predecessors. The success of Assassin's Creed, similar in both gameplay and tone, prompted Ubisoft to leave the prince behind. Since then, we've only gotten two Endless Runner spinoffs for mobile. A Sands of Time remake was announced in 2020, but was delayed indefinitely following backlash to the trailer's visuals. Only the dagger can unlock the Sands of Time. No! Number 4, Medal of Honor series. It seems Battlefield isn't the only military FPS that EA doesn't know what to do with. There was a time when Medal of Honor stood as tall as Call of Duty, with harrowing stories and pristine gameplay. For an impressive 12 installments, it put players in the middle of World War II. However, when Call of Duty moved into an era of modern warfare, Medal of Honor attempted to do the same. The 2010 reboot followed the war in Afghanistan and, while financially successful, wasn't nearly as impactful as Call of Duty's jump to the present. Its sequel, 2012's Warfighter, dropped further in caliber due to poor visuals, AI, and technical performance. The series has since stayed quiet, except for 2020's VR title, Above and Beyond and putting you as the player on an adventure that spans some of the biggest moments of the war. Number three, Tony Hawk series. There will always be a soft spot in our hearts for the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series. Even after Pro Skater was dropped from the name, Underground and American Wasteland were still solid entries. Unfortunately, the series began to dip in quality during the late 2000s due to a lack of innovation. The peripheral based ride and its sequel, while unique, were awkward and clunky to play. Activision attempted to bring back the Pro Skater brand with a fifth release in 2015. But as it was a slapdash mess made only to retain the license, it was criticized accordingly. It was nice to get a remastered bundle of the first two games in 2020 but the series is definitely past its prime. Number two, Fable series. Don't tell me you've forgotten a ghetto one. Well, I'm not bailing you out this time, son. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a gold piece for each good deed you do around Oakvale. Despite Peter Molyneux's unfulfilled promises, the Fable series managed to find itself an audience. By the time Fable 3 was released in 2010, the series was at its peak, though things started going south soon after. The cutesy and shallow Fable heroes and the Kinect exclusive Fable The Journey offered a double dose of mediocrity in 2012. The multiplayer centric Fable Legends was in development, but it was cancelled in 2016, after which developer Lionhead Studios closed. The only game to release since was Fable 14 a free-to-play digital card game. Microsoft has since admitted that forcing Lionhead to develop for Kinect was a bad call. Hopefully, it's much nicer to Playground Games, which is currently developing a new installment. 
Not all stories have happy endings. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Silent Hill Series Although it hasn't had a mainline game in a decade, Silent Hill still commands a lot of respect from horror fans. The franchise's quality dropped slightly once the entry stopped being numbered, though it certainly went out on a sour note. 2012 saw the releases of Book of Memories, a forgettable dungeon crawler spinoff, and Downpour, which suffered from poor combat and dull creature design. In 2014, a playable teaser for a new game from Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro scared the collective pants off everyone. But as we know, Kojima's falling out with Konami would ensure its tragic cancellation. New entries and a remake of Silent Hill 2 are currently in development, but until then, the outcome of Silent Hill remains a major disappointment. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.